17 gallon. Oh! <laughs> I think she's bigger than 17 and bam, it stops. Uh, we're gonna do both and hope the splitter works. Uh, we're like feeling pretty cool, you know, good day's work, checking out catch a can and then you catch the reflection of this beast in the window as you're driving by and you're like, So we've decided Joe knows where the local car wash is. So we're gonna go down and see if we can scrub off some of the lichens and the oysters, then the barnacles that attach themselves to this beautiful rig. Gonna put a little show, put a little shine on this baby. All right, made it to the car wash. This is a before. Oy. Oy. Running into a little problem, Joseph. <laughs> what is it? There's no pressure. <laughs> These two are going to be getting a job at the Blue Beacon. This thing's going to be streaking like the beacon. <laughs> it's going to make you nervous every time. <laughs> Oh, wipers work. Oh yeah, Scott put those new, blade, those new blades on too. Yeah. You guys ever seen one of these before? A mat cleaner beater. Oh, look at all that. See how it works. There's a big old brush in there now. Goes wild like a hog. And you gotta carefully insert the mat. Let that brush really give her that squeeze. <laughs> so I got to show you guys a couple treasures cleaning out the back ashtrays. Joe goes, this could probably be from when they were kids. I don't even know. Surge. Surge remember that? <laughs> Surge wrapper. That's, that was uh, late 90s stuff. And then we found this little uh, Nickelodeon sweepstakes. And as I'm reading the fine print, it says must be received by 12-1 of 97. So how old was your wife in 96? 11 years old. 11. <laughs> That's cool. It, there ain't no job complete till it's black iced. Oh <laughs> man. Maybe we should wax this baby and try to give it a little shine, a little show. There we so we gave her the wash job and once we got the lichens and the moss and all that <laughs> off of here, we uh, we discovered there's a few dings, you know, I, I don't know if that one's gonna buff out, but uh, we did, we did see there are some sparkles underneath here, but there's a lot of oxidation, a lot of swirlage going on, and we're gonna see what we can do, you guys. Joe's been working on that motion, and we're gonna, <laughs> it is. Joe's getting ready to undergo shoulder surgery shortly, so we're, uh, we're gonna do one last job that will thoroughly destroy that rotator yeah. cuff. <laughs> Check it. Mm-hmm. Sparkle wonder, awful oxidation. Shining princess, angry turd. It's coming around. Joe's probably gonna make us come out and wax it one more time. Yeah. Here in a couple hours after we recover Two a little bit. wax, Biff. Yeah. <laughs> Name that movie. <laughs> So yesterday we realized that this old tire has got some pretty good weather checking on the sidewalls. Maybe from getting curbed a time or two. It's kind of see some swirls and that was not from the waxing. Uh, so, and I found a sidewall little wave anyway. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna have to take this one off. I think it's the worst of the front two. We have new ones on the back. There's a brand new one on the spare. So we're gonna put the new one right here. Oh yeah. So we'll be like a three wheeler for sure. Then, uh, if the front left goes out, I guess we'll still have this decroted spare to uh, to get us down the road. The good news, we have a high lift jack. The bad news, 
is that high lift jacks are usually made to go under a bumper and this old girl we really waxed the heck out of it but it didn't seem to help the, uh, the sturdiness of the old thing i was telling these guys that i was on a Na nascar pit crew once and so they're uh, they're expecting a lot yeah they're expecting a it. lot there's the speed wrench i think if maybe i do a time lapse it'll make it look fast and you guys will never know how long it actually took us to change this tire we're losing spots on the track, Scott. Let's go. Let's I'm go. Not, I'm not at Milwaukee. <laughs> Joe's ready to stick that tire. <laughs> hey, when I said new tire, y'all, I meant I meant it. Now look at them pokies. Ha! Ah. <sighs> mm, maybe a little air that time. <laughs> well, how quickly the weather can change in Alaska. I think we captured the only sun they've ever known. Well, here we are at the ferry, you guys. Man, pretty confident in old Gary. We decided <laughs> to name it Gary after its uh, original owner. And old Gary here, I think, is good to go. Check out this old boy in front of us here. He's got a Dutes tractor. Is that how you say that, right? Dutes. <laughs> Dutes, Deutz, tomato, tomato, potato, <laughs> padoits. Right there. Here's another good old boy. I'm not sure where he's going or what he's doing, but he's got an Alaska plate on the front. He's got a new Wyoming plate on the back of this trailer. I got no idea. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Joseph, thanks, sir. Scott. Check that out, y'all. We got a lifeboat with a roof. Looks just like that. Arr, I can already tell I'm morphing into pirate mode. I think these guys are gonna be tired of me. Watch for this hose on the tractor there. Okay. Thanks. Yar. Uh, well, we've made it aboard. We have, we made it aboard. Never been on a big ship before. Some of you have probably been on cruises and such. These are the cabin windows, but we didn't go for the cabin. We're roughing it. Who needs a cabin? <laughs> Save that for a cruise someday. So a crazy little thing, we've been here for the last, what, four or five days? And the whole time that ferry has been sitting over there. We were wondering, you know, lights have been on all the time. Are they working on it? What are they doing? What's, it's, it's not in service. So not, not being in service, we kind of wonder what's the deal. Well, now that we're here, we got the angle. You can see it's got, it's got generators running on it. Maybe somebody out there knows more about that, but it's just crazy. This thing I, may have been sitting here all winter. I don't know, I guess they just keep it running. Run it during the day, shut it off at night. I don't know, but we are underway. Well, bad news, y'all. We haven't hardly left the port and the lifeboat's leaving us. They're bailing out, they're gone. I didn't realize these lifeboats have a little motor on it that sounds a lot like a little four-cylinder diesel. Well, hope we don't sink. Because if we do, they've left us. If you ever see one of them little orange things bobbing around in the ocean, yeah. stop and pick them up. Likely, yeah, some stranded sailors. Oh, yeah. 
Look at him go. That's how you get now it sounds like a little gas engine, a little airplane. Oh, 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 oh. So apparently, last trip by, when they were down by Canada, they had to medevac somebody off of here. But must have taken the land. I don't know. They deployed the lifeboat, and the lifeboat blew up. The old one blew up. They blew the engine in it. So this one that's putting around right now is the only one left. Hey there. <laughs> they already yeah. broke a lifeboat? Yeah, yeah. Blew the other one up. So anyway, they, uh, they I guess they picked up a new boat somewhere along the way, or a, a new old one, and they're out running around making sure it works and everything, everything is functional. But the funny part of this story is the guy that was standing here. I was like, oh, so what's your, what's your position here on the old ship? And he's like, chief first mate or something like that and i was like wait wait and he starts walking off and i'm like wait wait come back come here hey hey did not want to talk to me i'm sure he thinks i'm just some kind of sea urchin some bum of the island <laughs> but uh yeah he went on his way i thought maybe we we're gonna get a full boat tour could win him over with my charm i usually win people over with my charm but he was having none of it so we'll keep working on a tour for you at some point have, hey have we just totally stopped or we just did so yeah we're Zero. <laughs> like not Zero good. miles an hour. So we weren't sure what was going on. We, we've been going three miles an hour, which is like slower than a crab walks on the bottom <laughs> of this channel. I think a crab walks at about four and a half. We were doing three. <laughs> and come around to this other side and look what we see out there. You do not hear the putt, putt, putt of an engine anymore. What you hear is the silence of what I'm guessing is a disabled life raft, <laughs> which... You know, this goes both ways because I'll be honest, I didn't know that a lifeboat ever came with a motor in the first place. I thought you were just adrift on the seas. One of these days. So we're all a little anxious to get home, I'll be honest, because, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> Joe, you know Joe, the working man. You know Scatini over here is the working man. I'm always on a roll. You know, you know, you followed along. So we've been very... Oh, there it goes. Oh, I think they got life. <laughs> now, just go easy, boys. Just idle her around. No, don't do it. No, they're just letting it rip. No, no, no. And they're going away from us. So this is just supposed to be a three hour tour, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, good news. Life raft's back on, ships are moving. We're up to six miles an hour. Look at that. You know what that is? That's a rare thing, sunshine. to find a spot out here on the high seas that's calm enough to be able to tell you what's shaking so we just had dinner yeah i know i know you want to know we just finished up dinner got a little windy around the corner so i came back into the haven this seems to be the calm corner the starboard port side no i don't know what side it is uh dinner was good cafeteria is actually very good we, we went and got all these snacks to survive on the cafeteria is a winner. The salad bar there, I tell you what, you ever get on the old Kenny Cot, <laughs> get you some salad. Now, there's a couple things you can do on the boat. Cabins and peasants. And we opted to go with peasant mode because, you know, trying to be thrifty and, you know, wise, right? With your, with your money. So we are sleeping in sleeping bags on the deck, probably outside. like once or twice, two or three times a day. It's about 8.30 in the nighttime right now. You can come down, go to your pickup, get whatever you need. If you have a dog on, on the boat, they just poop and whiz all over the floor and you're under your car, it's really bizarre. All the pet owners, we have our little dog right here. <laughs> so as you're walking, you really gotta be careful. You don't wanna walk right into the deuce. had a little fun we went down to the uh went down to the lounge and they uh, someone had a guitar so we played a little music had a little fun it was a good time wasn't it scotty totally cool. fun time awesome. this is the abode what do you think right there oceans right over there in the blackness 
the oceans right over there. Joe, actually, a little shout out to man Joe. He said last time he was on a ferry and had trouble sleeping, he slept outside. Yeah. So we're gonna sleep outside and look what I got. See, the thing is, you guys, is there's this murky <coughs> yellow glow everywhere on the ship. And so you need some kind of covering on your eyes so you can sleep. Yo ho, yo ho, a pirate's life for me. Heave ho, thieves and beggars, never more to die. Hey, how y'all doing? It's kind of hard to sleep on this ship. Real loud out there, so came inside this little number. Oh yeah, it's a little metal room, not a cabin. Just kind of a, they call it a solarium. Check this out. Oh yeah, all them windows. I'm gonna say we're gonna get a total of about 12 minutes of sleep tonight. Yep. But you know what they say, good mask, good task. So, honestly, this whole surprise of the ferry has not been learning how fast Scott can swim behind the boat when he falls overboard. It has actually been how cheap the food is. Then, meat lovers omelet. Nine dollars. Yeah. Joseph, what'd you get there? A little sandwich. A little sandwich. Here's a cool demo for you, check this out. See where they logged back in the day? The very top of the mountain is old growth. Underneath it is just beautiful, fresh regrowth. And then some new log patches way down below, but look how lush and beautiful that fresh forest is. Well, you guys, right over here around the corner, Bellingham, Washington. This was a really neat experience. I know a lot of this episode was much more just showing you things going down the channel, but something you gotta remember about this is those things that we saw are things that you're only going to see, only going to see by taking this ferry. The ferry was awesome. It was kind of fun roughing it. It was a little tough to sleep. I think Joe, Joe might agree, yeah. you know. It's not that easy. <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not quite like a cruise. But if you ever get the chance, 
highly recommend taking the ferry. I know planes are easy and quicker and maybe even a few dollars cheaper from time to time, but there is so much of this coastline and earth that you don't even realize is there. Just two days of going 20 miles an hour through just the vast expanse. And then to think that that vast expanse moves inland, you know, just miles and miles and miles. The earth is a big old place. Don't you forget it. Fired right up quicker than quick. <laughs> man oh man, out the door we go. Oh, land, land! 50th the gear. inaugural fifth gear. <laughs> Never in 31 years on the islands have we done fifth gear. Man, look at that. No, not the steering wheel, the speedometer. Look at that, we're going <laughs> 60 mile an hour. I think we're going to be about 63 or 4, aren't we? Yeah. For the long haul, maybe. So old Gary here is geared real low. Trying to decide what's the acceptable, you know. We're gonna drive you for 15 hours straight, RPM range, and uh, you know, kind of bouncing that off the 20, 2100 is about 62. Yeah. We might kind of do that California overdrive deal where we <laughs> climb up these mountains and we just slap her down into neutral and kind of wind our way down to the, you know, oh yeah, must be nice, <laughs> must be nice. Got a fast pickup. <laughs> Government plates. Government plates. <laughs> Go figure. He ain't driving for a time. here to document the first pass, <laughs> the first ever, maybe ever pass that old Gary has made. Start growing. <laughs> we are overtaking, we are overtaking a rig, and this is Mon U. Mental. All right, first uh, first stop here. We're about 260 miles into our trip. It's non-stop hammer time. I think it's right where we left it. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, you're not supposed to top off your gas. <laughs> Something about it emitting vapors into the air. I tell you what though. <laughs> I tell you what, after riding the ferry and burning 10,000 gallons of diesel to come down here on or the boat. More. Or more. <laughs> I'm not really worried about the vapors anymore. Just not. Verdict is in. You guys want to take your little guess on fuel mileage? Remember, this has a 351. Fuel sipper. Fuel sipper. <laughs> it's Ford's version of the Detroit fuel pincher. <laughs> Just runs a whole lot better. What's your guess? Here's the answer. Bam! 9.1 couple factors though guys it's gonna get better Scotty it's gonna get better don't look so down Scotty it's gonna get better man so we got this giant topper cap I'm thinking we built some kind of plywood ramp that's gonna bump up our fuel probably to 10 1 and we had to climb over Snoqualmie this next tank we have a couple more passes but you know we're trying to tell ourselves maybe they're not gonna be as bad as the other one so we're gonna stop in Missoula will be our next stop 10-1, that's what we're shooting for, 10-1. 10-1. Man oh man, I've seen a lot of things, but I've never seen anything so magnificent. Yeah, it's something. I mean, <laughs> it is gonna turn heads. Stop, we're in a little town called St. Regis, Montana. Egregious in Regis. Actually a nice little spot right here on the freeway. Cool little gift shop, restaurant, restaurant, fuel stop. Guess what? What? Good news, bad news, mostly good. Good news is we are getting better fuel mileage. Okay. Bad news is maybe not quite as much as we were hoping for. Yeah. But it is better. What is it? Ten point three. Eh, it's an improvement. We're going the right direction, y'all. That was, we had two big old passes we just had to climb over. Now we're in the flats. We're gonna get to that fourteen number. You just wait and watch. It's coming at you. Strong, <laughs> Joe. It won't go. We see it's man Scott. Oh, there we go. That's a tough little bugger. <laughs> tough little bugger. <laughs> you know, looking around the joint, there's only one rig classing it up. Is it that one? Nope. It's this baby right here. 12 MPGs. And a baby. man. First time behind the wheel. 
can't see anything because of this fuzzy thing. <sighs> Crouch up above. It's kind of like driving a peak, you guys, when you sit on the floor. You see them guys and them Peterbilt sit on the floor? This is about what they see, just the speedometer. That's why they drive so fast. But I haven't seen this instrument cluster lit up like this since I was in high school. See, I had a old rooster had a 1997 crew cab power stroke. We'd take her to town to the movies on the weekend and we could drive home late at night. And this was always the sight. Well, oh, you guys, you see that right there? That is the full circle lights of home for these guys. <laughs> Not for me. It's 2 a.m. We got back to Billings. Old Gary over there, look at that, just a champ. Only malfunction, brake lights. Oh, let's check them. Let's check them. I, I think they died again. We had them running when we left. No, they're back they on. We got them. I think they worked the whole time. Scratch that. Zero malfunctions. Gary is a wizard. Perfect. Man. Y'all, it's been good. It's been real. It's been long. Yeah, it's very long. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been good. I think we're all excited to get back to work. So uh, thanks for coming along. Hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time. Yeah, be good.